Actual pictures of Glenn in the capsule will give scientists the opportunity to study his reactions as he passes over the Canary Islands, Africa, the Indian Ocean, Australia, back across the Pacific and over the United States. He speeds at 17,500 miles an hour, reaching a high point of 160 miles and a low altitude of 99 miles. Each of the three orbits takes about 90 minutes. Three times the colonel sees the sun rise within a period of four hours and 56 minutes. Three times around the globe for a trip of 81,000 miles before he re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, a shield protecting the astronaut from the intense heat. The carrier Randolph is the command ship in the pickup area. But Glenn, instructed not to jettison his retrol rockets, lands short of the carrier. Ground instruments indicated his heat shield was loose, and he was instructed to hold onto his rocket bank to help hold the shield in place. Right at hand, however, is the destroyer Noah, and she speeds to the capsule to take the vehicle and pilot aboard. Despite a few shaky moments among ground control personnel, Glenn is down, hale and hearty, with support cables attached a pincer-like crane will lift the Friendship 7 aboard. The end of a saga. The now famous Friendship 7 is safely lashed to the deck of the destroyer and the crew prepares to help Glenn from the capsule. They attempt to help the colonel from his complex prison through the upper exit in the mouth. They encounter difficulties, and so it is decided to blow off the escape hatch cover. First glimpse of the conquering hero, Colonel John H. Glenn. He Mr. left Glenn, his Glenn, your husband said his condition was excellent. How is yours? I'm happy. I feel wonderful. <laughs> How about you, Glenn? I express the great uh, happiness and uh, thanksgiving of all of us that Colonel Glenn has completed his trip, and I know that this is uh, particularly felt by Mrs. Glenn and his two children. A few days ago, uh, Colonel Glenn came to the White House and uh, visited me. And he was, as are the other astronauts, the kind of American of whom we are most proud. Uh, some years ago, as a Marine pilot, he raced the sun across this country and lost. And today, uh, he won. I also want to uh, say a word for all those who participated with Colonel Glenn at Canaveral. They faced many disappointments and delays. The burdens upon them were great, but they uh, kept their heads and they made a judgment. And I think their judgment has been vindicated. We have a long way to go in the space race. Uh, we started late, but this is the new ocean. And I believe the United States uh, must sail on it and be in a position uh, second to none. Some years, months ago, I said that I hoped that every American would uh, serve his country. Today, uh, Colonel Glenn uh, served his, and we all express our thanks to him. Thank you.
Lieutenant Colonel John H. Glenn, Jr., United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, members of the Congress, I am only too aware of the tremendous honor that's being shown us at this joint meeting of the Congress today. When I think of past meetings that involved heads of state and equally notable persons, I can only say that I am most humble to know that you consider our efforts to even be in the same class. This has been a great experience for all of us on the program and, and for all Americans, I guess, too. And I'm certainly glad to see that pride in our country and its accomplishments are not a thing of the past. I know I still get a real hard-to-define feeling down inside when the flag goes by, and I know all of you do, too. As was to be expected, not everything worked perfectly on my flight. We may well need to make changes, but these will be tried out on subsequent three-orbit flights later this year to be followed by 18-orbit, 24-hour missions. Beyond that, we look forward at the moment to Project Gemini, a two-man orbital vehicle with greatly increased capability for advanced experiments. There will be additional rendezvous experiments in space, technical and scientific observations, then Apollo orbital, circumlunar, and finally lunar landing flights. What did we learn from Friendship 7 flight that will help us attain these objectives? Some specific items have already been covered briefly in the news reports. And I think it is of more than passing interest to all of us that information attained from these flights is readily available to all nations of the world. The launch itself was conducted openly and with the news media representatives from around the world in attendance. Com Complete information on our project is released as it is evaluated and validated. This is certainly in sharp contrast with similar programs conducted elsewhere in the world and elevates the peaceful intent of our program. Local boy makes good. Colonel John Glenn returns to New Concord, Ohio for a reception by the hometown folks. Climax to the acclaim he has had from Cape Canaveral to New York. Nowhere, however, did he receive a warmer welcome than right here in Ohio where he grew up. Upwards of 50,000 people jammed into this town, which has a population of 2,100. And the home folks have even further ambitions for their hero. The last great reception for the astronaut, now it's back to work on the space program.